and welcome to Love Anything Art. I've rolled out several different colors of blue clay, dark all the way to light. And this is the clay extruder I'll be using. It was really cheap. I got it at a craft store. It was like $10. But I'll be using this square-shaped extruder. I'll just put that in there. And this is the contraption here. And with each of the colors of blue clay, I've rolled them out into a cylindrical shape, about the width of my extruder, so I can fit them inside. I'll just put on the cap where the clay will come out of. And then the other end, I'll just start inserting all of my clay. You can do it in whatever pattern you would like. It will come out different depending on the way that you put the colors in. And that one was slightly too big. You can just gently roll it out and it'll fit just in there. Once you have all of them in there, you'll just insert the back part and use a lot of force to get that clay out of there. It does kind of hurt my hands, and I'm sure there are better extruders out there. Spend a little bit of money, and it would probably go a long way. I'll just cut off the excess clay. And with this extruder, again, I don't use it a whole lot because it is kind of messy and a lot of work to clean out the tube inside. So once you remove the end cap, you have all of this clay that gets stuck to the very, very end, and then all down the center of the tube. And it does take a little while to get that out. If you don't get it all out, it will go into the next piece you put in there. And this is all the clay that I actually extruded from the extruder. We'll put that in the scrap pile. And just to see what it looks like inside, go ahead and cut off a little piece on the end here. And the beautiful thing about this is, as you go farther down the snake, it will have different patterns in there. So that's fun. I'll just kind of show you here, just cut off a little bit. And that's the other end. And this is all my beautiful, wonderful scrap clay that I make so many things out of. And I'll just take some random pieces out of here. This will be the center of my beads. So I'll just kind of randomly pick out some pieces. Oh yeah, that's from the clay extruder. It goes back into the scrap pile. And this is just some random pieces I've chosen. I'll just kind of smoosh it all together and then give it a nice gentle roll into a nice long snake. And then I'll just cut off even length sections. And with each of those sections, I will give it a gentle roll and make it into a ball shape. And this is the extruder clay. As you'll see, it looks different at all different sections of the extruder. With each of those sections, I'll just get a nice gentle chopping into even length pieces. Now that I have chopped all my pieces up here, I'll just begin placing them on the outside of the bead and it's just completely random. Put it on there however you want it to look. Just make sure all the little spaces are filled so you don't have any of that scrap clay show through. And then just give it a nice gentle pinch between your fingers all around before you give it a gentle roll between your fingers and it'll help keep its shape a little bit better without distorting the pattern. Kind of looks like a little soccer ball. And these are all the pieces I've rolled out. I've done enough for a bracelet, a necklace, and then some earrings. And these, I just added a little bead cap to the end of each of them. 
and I'll just begin poking my holes through all of my beads. Just very gently at first, start a little hole and then just gently press and you can also give it a little spin. And also just wanted to let you know I have started an Instagram account, so if you are an Instagram fan, please come find me on there. Love anything art. And with my earrings, I'll just poke a little hole on each end right there in the center of the bead cap and I will bake it with those pieces stuck inside of there. And now that all of my beads are ready to be baked, I'll go ahead and bake those. And I did bake them on these pieces of paper, folded up the edges so that they did not float around in my oven. And then I'll just take and remove all of the stick pins from all of my beads. This is the wire that I got from BB Craft. I did a video for them a little while back. I'm just going to use some of this wire, cut off a decent amount, and this is going to be for my bracelet. And just cut off a little bit more than you think you need. And I will place on my clamshell on one end. And then I will put my crimp bead on there. And then give it just a nice crimp. Keep it towards the end of the wire. And then just close the clamshell around your crimp bead to hide it. I always have a hard time with the clamshells. I hope you have an easier time with it. And then I'll just begin placing on my beads until I have filled up my string or run out of beads. And this is it. I did make some larger beads for the center and smaller for the outside. On a, again, on this end I'll do the same. I'll put a clamshell and then a crimp bead. And I'll put that crimp bead all the way down into that clamshell. And then give it a nice crimp. Cut off that excess wire. And then close up the clamshell. And these are the toggle clasps that I got from BB Craft also. And no, this isn't a BB Craft video. I just am using a lot of their supplies because I got so much of it. And I'll just put on a jump ring and then the toggle clasp. And then I'll do the same with the other side. And put it through there. And voila! bracelet is done. With my earrings, this is one of them. I'm going to make a second one just to get that loop and that bead at the top. I'll just take a stick pin that has a loop already made on the end and, and I'll just put on my bead. Drop it all the way down there and then just cut off a little bit so that I have a little bit of my stem left and then I can insert that into the top of the bead and I've made a second one for the bottom and I'll just glue in both of the ends and you do want the little hole to face up so that both of them are facing the same direction and then for the bottom piece that's going to dangle I'll just take a bead and put it on my stick pins and this one has the little plate stopper at the bottom and then just about a finger's width up I'll cut off the excess and then I will make 
a loop Sometimes you have to play with it just a little bit and just move it back and forth to get it in that nice little bend on the back and to get the little hole closed up. And I'll use a small jump ring. Open that up. and attach my little dangle piece to the bottom of my earring. And then close that jump ring up. And then for the top part, I'll add on my earring hook. And then close it up. And for the necklace, I have different size beads going from small to large and then large to small. And with each of these beads, I have found that my hole is not big enough. So I'm just gonna use this drill and drill a hole up through the middle just to get it a little bit wider so that I can fit two strings down one bead. And there you go. And I'm gonna cut off two even length sections of wire. My necklace will have two wires. And then at the end of both of them, stick them together, add on a crimp bead and crimp it. And then cover that up with a clam shell. And these are some glass sea beads that I have, and I'm going to use these with my polymer clay beads and make the necklace. Just for easy access, I'll just dump some of these in a mold that I have, and I'll just start digging out the colors that I want and placing them on each of the strand separately. So each strand will have beads on it. like so. And you'll keep going until you're about halfway through your wire. About that much. You can make it as long as you want. And with my beads, I'll start placing them on. And this is the exact pattern. I will have them on there. And this is just a random little metal bead that has a little rose on it. thought it was really cute and it would look really good on the end of my beads. So just start assembling, and I will begin with my little metal bead, and then putting on a polymer clay bead, and then I'm just going to use some crimp beads that I have. They also work well as bead spacers, and I'll just keep going until I have my pattern. So I have my two strands there, and then goes to a single strand, and then back into two strands. And I'll finish putting on my little C beads, some on each of the strands, until I fill up this side. Once I have all of my beads on there, I'll put another crimp bead on there. Close that up. Cut off the excess wire. And then wrap my clamshell bead around the crimp bead and close it up. I'll place a jump ring on the end of that clamshell bead and then my toggle clasp. I'm using the same one I used for the bracelet. 
the same pattern. And then I'll put one on the other side. And the necklace is done. I like, 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 like the way these all came out. I think they're very pretty. And they will be available in my Etsy shop if anybody is interested. Along with all of my other pieces that I make. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!